is Christian Basin. I'm the CEO of the Danish Design Center. We work to advance the value of design for business and government and uh, other parts of society. We uh, collaborate with uh, businesses, everything from startups to corporates, and we collaborate with uh, public institutions. Uh, we are co-funded by the Danish government. My background is that I've uh, worked with the field of innovation in the public sector for uh, a decade and a half at least, and uh, published a range of books and uh, articles and uh, other publications in the field. Not least uh, a book called Leading Public Sector Innovation. And I also, for uh, the year 2012 to 13, was the chairman of the European Union's uh, or European Commission's expert group on public sector innovation and where we published a report uh, and recommendations called uh, Powering European Public Sector Innovation Towards a New Architecture. I'm going to speak about uh, three major dimensions of, um, of the question of innovation and co-creation in policy making. The first one is really the question of you know, why do we need innovation in government? Uh, and we need it because there are some major limitations to our current way of doing things. Government organizations, they struggle to stay in touch with citizens, with their stakeholders, and they struggle to develop radical new uh, solutions. We're in a world that's increasingly complex, uh, interconnected, it's full of uh, quick, radical technological change, it's full of environmental challenges and problems, it's almost like the planet is burning right now, and it's also full of increasing societal and social challenges. And the problem is, that public administrations have really been built to focus exactly on that, on administration and not least internal administration, rather than connecting with society's needs in a very direct and innovative way, and rather than being machines of innovation, you could say. So because we built public organizations for stability and reliability, not really for change, there are a number of barriers that characterize how public institutions um, address the question of innovation. Those barriers are, for example, the aversity to risk and the barrier uh, in terms of a lack of uh, capabilities and skills and competencies to innovate. There are barriers around strategy, uh, there are barriers around uh, connecting to other actors in society. Secondly, when it comes to the need for innovation in policymaking, there really is a need to chart a new course. The circumstances are different, the challenges are different, and the volume and scope uh, of change in society is simply unprecedented. There's no single domain in society where governments are not expected to play a role. We saw that during the global financial crisis in 2008 and 9 and 10, where everybody looked to government to act, to, in a sense, save the economy, and to come up with the innovative policies that could propel our societies forward. The same is the case now, during the global COVID-19 pandemic, where the moment a pandemic like that hits us, everybody looks to government around the world to come up with fast, agile, innovative responses. And indeed, many governments have actually also done so, uh, and you can even talk about a bit of an innovation dividend when it comes to the experience of, uh, of, of innovating in the face of the pandemic. But that's an extreme situation, and you can, of course, risk that everybody kind of falls back again into the good old administrative bureaucratic way of doing things. So uh, the pandemic shows us what can be done and how innovative governments can be. The question becomes, how do we more permanently make those shifts towards uh, the ability to innovate in policymaking? So that leads me to my third point, which is that public sector organizations can shift and should shift in different ways to becoming much more innovative uh, organizations. It's really about a shift in how the public sector creates new societal solutions. And those shifts are really fourfold. The first one is to take a much more systematic approach to renewal and innovation in government. Building the ability to innovate and the ambition to innovate into government strategy at the highest level and making that a priority for top management. The second is to shift from managing human resources to really building innovation capability. Thinking about who you recruit, what skills and mindsets they are, 
how, how you develop competencies and skills, and not least also how you organized, shifting towards much more team-based and project-based types of working. Third shift is realizing that you know, leaders or managers in government are not just administrators. They are also leaders, they are change makers, or they can be. And um, as I write in Leading Public Sector Innovation in the book, uh, really we need more courageous leadership and the ability to, to experiment, to uh, trial and error, and uh, to learn fast, and maybe even also to uh, take risks where you, where you fail a little bit, and learn from those failures and move on. Finally, the fourth shift is that governments need to shift away from merely administrating tasks to embracing new ways of not just project work, but really orchestrating co-creation. So really engaging multiple actors and citizens in processes of uh, innovation that can really transform how governments work and create more value to citizens and society. Mm -hmm.